to be in every single shot. Is this too bright? I can't tell. Anyway, hi guys. It is a gorgeous day in New York City today. It's almost 60 degrees. It is late February and I am not complaining. So I'm gonna take advantage of this day and I'm gonna to head to B&H because I wanna pick up a lens that I've been meaning to get. This is a wide angle lens that I've been looking at. It's a Sony 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master lens and it is a doozy of a lens. I saw a bunch of other creators using it and I just wanna have a really high quality wide angle lens that I think is going to be really helpful for the vlog and also my short form content. So I'm gonna bring you guys on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and we're gonna go pick that up. Before I do that, I just wanted to say, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you do subscribe. It means a lot to me. I know that it, if you are watching my vlogs regularly, even if you're not subscribed and they show up in the YouTube recommendations, I understand and I appreciate the view, believe me, but the subscribe really is important to me. So if you could subscribe, it would mean a lot. And if you could turn on the bell and like this video, bonus points. I really appreciate it and I thank you for watching. Let's head to B&H. Got it. All that footage, by the way, was shot on the DJI Osmo. This little thing is awesome for B-roll. Like all those shots, like I don't know if you've, if you've ever ridden on a city bike before, you know that riding on Manhattan streets is pretty tumultuous and there's potholes everywhere. And it's just like, I wouldn't even feel comfortable holding my phone, let alone a full camera like I'm vlogging on now. So the fact that you can just like have this little thing in your pocket, it's small, there's a gimbal, so the footage was really, really steady, is awesome. We're here to talk about this lens that I got. Also, B&H is awesome. If you ever are in New York City, you should definitely check out B&H. It's really fun. It's like a Best Buy on crack. They have a bunch of pro audio, pro video, hence me getting this lens there. That's why I didn't have it in store. I do prefer Best Buy, um, but b &H is just insane. Like, it's hard to describe. All right, here's this lens. This is the Sony 14 millimeter F1.8 F-stop. I'm not a, I am not a pro, I am learning as I go, but F-stop, lower F-stop means you're gonna get that bokeh effect, which is when the background is blurred, and lower the F-stop, more bokeh effect. More, uh, it's a shallow depth of field and 14 millimeter means it's wider. I am vlogging right now on a 16 to 35, meaning it's a zoom lens, so I can zoom in to 35 millimeter and I can zoom out to 16 millimeter. Right now it is at the widest, so 16, but I'm gonna to switch to this shortly and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. This is a Sony lens and they are E-mount lenses, meaning it's really easy to turn on and off and it's just like Sony's proprietary method for lenses, but let's open this up and then check out the footage. But before we get into the unboxing, I do wanna take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. I don't know if you ever wondered about the inner workings of your mind, not like just like surfacey level stuff, but like deep, intricate workings of your brain. It all kind of started for me when I realized that I had anxiety and I was like fed up with my own self and I just wanted to take action. So the way that I took action was going to therapy. And in therapy, I uncovered that my anxiety was giving me this sort of like road, mental roadblock to be as productive as I honestly could be. And instead of letting those to-do lists become insurmountable mountains, I was able to acknowledge my triggers and acknowledge that my anxiety was preventing me from actually doing what I needed to do. And it took a lot of sort of like self-growth and self-discovery with the guidance of my therapist to get there, but I'm really glad that I did. If you wanna understand yourself better, I recommend the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. With BetterHelp, you are matched with a licensed therapist who is suited to your preferences and needs. Plus, with BetterHelp, therapy is accessible anywhere, anytime, and on your terms. You can use their app, 
messaging or video calls instead of having to go into an office, which can be daunting or just plain inconvenient. Join over 4 million people who have taken the first step in their personal growth journey and join BetterHelp today. You can use my link in the bio or go to betterhelp.com forward slash Ben Taylor to get 10% off your first month. This not only supports my channel, but it also marks the beginning of a journey to you understanding and improving your own world. All of Sony's lenses actually come with a nice case, which I don't really have a use for, because as you know from the last vlog, I use the Peak Design cases and things like that, so I, I don't need to have like a, just a case for just one lens, but it is, it's, a, it's actually like a nice case. It's probably be like 20 to 30 bucks in a store. Nice, this is, it's pretty hefty. And you can see it's actually got a little bit of a fish eye lens to it, but from what I read, this lens will not have distortion on the side. All right, the next cut that you see is gonna be on the new lens and you're gonna see a lot more of the office right now. So definitely a noticeable difference. It's a lot wider and you can see that it you know, fills the room a bit more. Um, this is definitely gonna be the lens that I vlog with in the future. I'm obviously gonna have to look at this footage, but um, I, I'm sure it's pretty sick because this is a G Master lens and G Master lenses uh, have really high quality glass compared to a standard lens. So I'm really excited to check this out. Also, this is what I was talking about with that bokeh effect. You can see behind me is a little more blurry and I'm in focus. That's what you get with a low f-stop lens. <laughs> Morning, it's the next day. I'm on that 14 millimeter lens right now. I had a weird setting on before. Actually, I've had weird settings on this whole video, so I apologize. But this should be even wider now than when I was originally showing you. And I looked at that footage. I think it looks really good, so I'm excited for this lens. Anyway, I get a lot of comments about my fragrance collection because there's been like sneaks and peeks of it. Sneaks and peeks. Sneak peeks of it in my closet. So. I wanted to go in there, show you some of my favorites and talk about them. Are they worth it? What I use them for? And yeah, let's give you, I'll give you like a little overview. So let's go in the closet now and take a look. So this is where the fragrances live. I got this awesome marble tray from West Elm and it's this like cool black marble. It was really affordable. And I just think this is like a perfect little vanity tray. I'm gonna take you through some of my favorites that I've collected. Obviously you can see already that I've got some brands that I like uh, that I have, you know, favorites from. So let's get into it. I wanted to give you guys a better shot of the tray that I was talking about. You can see how beautiful it is, this nice black marble. And I really like that it doesn't have like too much of a lip on it. And I like that this side is kind of open and it just like looks perfect for a dresser or a vanity or even a nightstand or I don't know, there's just a lot of purposes for it. And I love this tray. So I'll leave it linked in the description if you want to check it out more. I'm going to talk today about my five favorite fragrances. And we're going to talk about whether or not it's worth it to me to invest in luxury fragrances. I'm going to just get to the cut to the chase and say that to me, these fragrances have more depth. They have uh, better quality scents and oils used to make them. And I personally can tell more. I find that a lot of fragrances from fashion houses are uh, just kind of smell like a mall, right? And like, you know, that scent and, or like reminds me of high school. And I don't know, anything that's reminiscent of that to me is an indication of just like a cheaper scent. So investing in these is gonna give you higher quality fragrance, higher quality solution that's gonna last longer or and also project more, meaning uh, it's you know a little, less goes a longer way and it will last you a long time. Many of these fragrances that I'm gonna talk about today I've had for many years and have not had to replenish yet. So that's a testament to it as well. Let's start with Louis Vuitton. This is Louis Vuitton Roses. It comes in the darker bottle. They have uh, a bunch of fragrances that are in the clear bottle. This one comes in the darker bottle. And I really like that the bottle has this like magnetic closure to it, which you can kind of see. That's really nice. 
It's called Les Sables Roses. I'm not gonna work on French today, okay? So don't come for me. I'm just gonna read exactly what Louis Vuitton says about this scent, and then I'm gonna tell you what I interpret it as. All right, Louis Vuitton says that this is Bulgarian rose, Centrifolia rose, oud wood, black pepper, saffron. I will tell you that from my, for me, this is a woody, peppery, masculine, rose kind of floral scent. And it is a little bit heavier. When I say heavier, it just feels uh, richer. Definitely more of a nighttime scent. Okay, so going out, a special occasion, date night, Louis Vuitton roses. Switching over to Byredo, I have several Byredo scents. We're talking about two of them today. This first one is De Los Santos. It's an Eau de Parfum. And this is one of my newer fragrances. No, this is actually my newest fragrance that I just got a couple months ago. I actually got the sample of this first. I tried it out when I was in LA in December, and then I eventually did purchase it. Just to talk about the bottle here as well, the, all Byredo scents have the, the same sort of design. And again, a magnetic lid, which, uh, is common with a lot of fragrances, but especially luxury brands. And this one is made from the, is based off of the Palo Santo scent, which I'm obsessed with Palo Santo, and I have Le Labo's Palo Santo room spray that I really like, but there is something that is a little bit more unique about it with De Los Santos. Let me read what Byredo says about it. So Byredo says that this is Clary Sage, Mirabelle, Oris, Cyst Oil. I don't know what that, Ciste Oil? Musks and Palo Santo. I, I would say there is a little bit of a, a musky scent to it. There's definitely a, a sort of like very small floral kind of herbal undertone, which I guess is the sage. But to me, this is just a really nice take on Palo Santo and it's very fresh, day, beach, pool, year round, easy to wear. And there, it's just, it's just like a scent that makes me smile. I don't know, it, it, but it smells it smells really nice and um, I love this scent and I'm, I'm excited about it. While we're talking about Byredo, might as well talk about Cellier. Cellier, this is an, uh, this is an extra de parfum. What does that mean? It just means that it's, um, it's stronger, it's stronger. Uh, so this one a little bit goes <clears throat> a long way and these are more expensive for, for less, which is, which is why but they come with the rose, uh, this sort of like gold uh, spray top, but it's the same sort of like design of the bottle. And this is probably my favorite fragrance that I own. This is very woody, very almost whiskey notes, woody, smoky, masculine, musky. That is the vibe. If you do not like a smoky scent, this is not for you, but I'm, completely obsessed with it. And to me, this is like, I get the most compliments <clears throat> on this scent. And it's a, it's like, to me, it's like a quintessential, like reminds me of good nights out and fun times. Let me read what Byredo says about it. Cashmeron black tea is the top. The heart of it is leather, tobacco leaves, and the base is birch tree and oak moss. So yeah, I, I guess that leatheriness, yeah, leather and tobacco. I mean, that's what you're getting. You're getting like a very leathery, smoky scent that is very potent, but very unique and very uh, strong. And um, I love it, really like it. Another 13, this is a Lalabo scent. Lalabo bottles are uh, also very consistent across the line and they have these labels. Lilabo actually makes their scents for you in, right, right in front of you, sight and scene. So these are not sitting uh, in most Lilabo boutiques. They're not like sitting out for you to purchase. You have to order it from the counter and then they mix it right in front of you with all the ingredients, which is cool. And they can also, and they tell you like when it was compounded and, uh, and where, and you can write for, so it makes a cute gift too. This is a really unique scent, but it, it it's very wearable. So it's kind of, they call it like animal musky. I know I'm gonna read the notes, but I just remember that. And that is like the way to describe it. It is kind of musky but it's not overly masculine. I think women could wear this, men could wear this, but to me, I don't know, it really is both. It doesn't remind me either way. It just reminds you of a man because I wear it, but I would say that this is, an, you could wear this to the office, you could wear this daytime, you could wear this nighttime, um, and it's a really unique scent that uh, is not overpowering as well unless you spray too much of it, but um, let's see what Lalabo says about it. So they're calling this a clean musky fragrance, which is, I didn't read this before. That's exactly how I would describe it. It is a very wearable, but also musky fragrance. They're saying that the notes are uh, ambrosian. Is that how you say that? Green citrus, apple, and pear. So there's like a fruitiness to it. 
and citrusy, ci citrusness, fruitiness to it. But then uh, the musky ambrette seed undertone. So I don't know. I don't know what those things specifically smell like, uh, except for apples and pears. I do. I don't really get too much fruit in it. I need to smell it again. I guess you do. You you do kind of get the sweetness. It's a really unique scent. You have to try it out. I I do think it's either people will hate it or love it. Most people do love it. It's a very popular fragrance. Definitely check it out. Very wearable. If you were just gonna get one fragrance that you wanted to like be super versatile and a signature scent, I think this could be it. I don't know when Celine got into fragrances, but they just became on my radar recently, just purely because of the bottle. And they also make these like mega sizes of it, which I think is really cool to display if you're into that and uh, you want to have like something that's like a centerpiece of your vanity or dresser or, or room, whatever. But uh, again, bottle construction is really nice. It's kind of got this like fluted glass here and then the cap is definitely magnetic, which is, I don't know, there, there's just something about that magnetic that I like. This is called Black Tie and this is just a really warm and luxurious vanilla scent. There is no other way to describe it. This is a uh, a very kind of like sweet, but also a little bit of musk to it, uh, vanilla scent. They call it black tie because it definitely feels a little like luxurious and, and mysterious in a way. Um, I wear this on its own. I, I do a couple spritzes during the day if it's gonna be a daytime scent. Now at nighttime, call me crazy, but I like to layer my fragrances because someone on TikTok told me about it and I was like, I never even thought about that. And this to me, because it's got that vanilla, delicious sort of like scent to it that kind of can go with a lot of things. I've been pairing it with the Cellier. So I'll do a spritz of Cellier, a couple spritzes of vanilla because this doesn't project as far and it's not as strong as the Cellier. You really just need one, one or two of these maximum. But like to me, the tobacco, leather, strong, musky, masculine of the Cellier with a spritz of this is like, ooh, really nice. And it, and it creates a, um, a really nice pairing. Let me read exactly what Celine says about this. They're saying this is an androgynous composition, meaning you know it can be uh, masculine or feminine, and vanilla is the first the first note. They're saying fashion like a dinner jacket, cedar and tree moss. So that that's that like muskiness that I was talking about. The main notes for this, according to them, are orris butter. Don't know what that is. Cedar, tree moss, vanilla, musk. To me, vanilla is the is the very powerful note in this, but that cedar tree moss musk definitely comes through to make this a little more mysterious and not like a Bath and Body Works vanilla scent, which it is not, or like Victoria's Secret vanilla scent, which is it is not at all. This is just um, a really kind of like mature and luxurious vanilla scent. That's it, I hope you enjoyed this luxury fragrance tour and I hope that this helps you make the decision on whether or not you think that luxury fragrances are worth it. They are pricey, uh, but they're investments just like most luxury pieces. Thank you guys for watching this vlog, I appreciate it. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it really helps me know that you guys are enjoying what you're seeing. Please turn the bell on for notifications of when I post and please leave a comment with what your favorite luxury fragrance is. I'll catch you guys in the next vlog.